In this video, I'm going to show you how to evaluate trig functions for any angle. We'll talk about all six of our trig functions, and I'll show you some tricks to evaluate them for any angle. Um, in general, if you have an angle that opens up in this fashion, uh, you're always going to be able to talk about some coordinates that are out here on the outside edge of your terminal side. Those are always going to have an X and a Y coordinate. You can always draw a right triangle and evaluate this angle. And this length is always going to be your y value. Uh, this horizontal length is always going to be your x value. And this coordinate is always going to have an x and y pair. So earlier, talking about our unit circle and our trig functions whenever we were to draw an, an, an angle we talked about the sine function being equal to y and that came about because on the unit circle when we talked about uh, the opposite over the hypotenuse the hypotenuse was always going to be one well if we draw just any angle that might not necessarily be true so uh, for this lesson we're going to have values uh, for our hypotenuse or our R value that will not be 1. So we're going to have to keep this ratio as it is, y over r. r being the hypotenuse um, or the radius if you were to draw a circle around it. So in this case, r would be undefined if it were equal to 0. Now. The reason why this doesn't have to always be defined is because this uh, length won't ever be zero. I mean, that just won't ever happen. So, a lot of times in math books, they don't put that there because it just is never a case. But we will have undefined functions as we go here. So, if we continue here, we got the cosine. That would be the adjacent side of the x value over the radius or the r value and again we don't have to define r then we would have tangent and that would be equal to opposite over adjacent or y over x now in this case we have to say that x cannot be zero otherwise it's undefined And we can also talk about our reciprocal values, or reciprocal functions. So the reciprocal of sine is our cosecant. And that would be r over y. And in this case, we would have to say y cannot be 0, otherwise it's undefined. The reciprocal of cosine is secant. So we would have r over x. Similarly, x cannot be 0, otherwise it's undefined. And lastly, we have our cotangent, and that would be x over y. And here, y could not be 0, otherwise it would be undefined. So we have to keep all of these ratios as they are right now if we're going to define any angle. So let's do an example. <clears throat> say that we have this angle and it could be a negative angle opening up clockwise it could be a positive angle opening all the way over there either way you're going to get these uh, supposed coordinates let's say they're 3 and negative 4 on the number line um, so approximately something like that you can imagine this or draw it something like that so positive 3 on the X negative 4 on the Y and we would have either this angle right here or this angle over here and if you watched my last video it wouldn't matter either way because we would have the same values of our trig functions so what we end up doing is we always want to just uh, talk about this this supposed like a uh, reference angle spot although it doesn't have to be a reference angle but you're always talking about the angle between the terminal side and the x-axis wherever you are 
And so you can imagine this right triangle right here, and we can evaluate our six trig functions. So the one thing that is missing is this R value. And anytime you want to evaluate uh, your six trig functions, you always are going to need these three values. You're going to need your X value, your Y value, and your R value. So whatever you're missing, solve for that first. That's your first step, is to find, find the missing side or, or value. So we got to solve for R first. Uh, one thing you might recognize is that this is a special uh, right triangle. It's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And I could prove that to you by doing the math. Hopefully you know this formula that um, the hypotenuse is always equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of X and Y, or the two legs of your triangle. So we just plug things in turns into the square root of 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. And here's another thing that you might recognize is that even though this is a negative value, uh, whenever we square it, it's always going to be a positive value. So the math should always work out and you should never be dealing with negative, uh, <clears throat> negative numbers under a square root or imaginary values. So we end up getting a 9 plus 16 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5, so r is 5. So if you didn't recognize that it was a special right triangle, or if you just had to solve it because it wasn't a special right triangle, this would be the process you go through. Um, and, it, and it's really it's just the Pythagorean theorem. It's just a fancy way of starting it. Um, but if you just use your Pythagorean theorem equals, equals c squared, then you should be able to get your answer either way you go. Alright, so our R value is 5 now. Now we can evaluate all six of our trig functions. The sine of our angle is going to be Y over R, or in other words, negative 4 over 5. And we're going to leave it in that ratio form there. The cosine is going to be X over R, or in other words, 3 over 5. And the tangent is going to be equal to y over x, or negative 4 over 3. And some books will ask for the decimal. Other books will ask you to leave it in this ratio form. Um, it just depends on what the instructions tell you to do. So let's do the reciprocal functions now. We'll do the cosecant. Just flip this sine ratio. So now we have negative 5 fourths. Keep that negative on top or in front. The secant is going to be 5 over 3. Just flip that cosine. And the cotangent is going to be reciprocal of tangent. So negative 3 over 4. So really, it's just a two-step process. Just make sure you know all three values, your x, your y, and your r value. Um, use Pythagorean theorem to solve for any of the values that you don't know. And then just evaluate your six trig functions by substituting those values. Uh, sometimes it will require a little bit more uh, simplifying math if you're dealing um, with some radicals or things like that. So make sure you know how to rationalize and simplify radicals. But otherwise it's just you know these two steps. Um, so there you go. There's how to evaluate uh, six trig functions given any angle.